The year was 2019. Well, okay, actually the year was 2001 when things really began, but we're gonna skip ahead 18 or so years because we don't have time for all that. Okay, anyways, the year was 2019. It had been seven years since the Super Monkey Ball series had gotten any new game. Okay, five years if you count the dumb mobile game. Shut up, you're missing the frickin' point. Fan games such as Rolled Out and Paperball began their development, and the fans of the series were hungry for something new. Suddenly, new trademarks began popping up. Was it time for a new game, or would it be an HD remake? The answer to the latter was yes. For Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. This game was kind of baffling for Sega to port, but I said to myself, and I think many others did, if this leads to a better future for the franchise, I'm going to support it. As such, I bought the game at launch. There had never been a series where I bought a game I didn't want to play purely to support the game developers, but classic Super Monkey Ball is one of the best game franchises of all time in my eyes, and I wanted to see it succeed and return to its glory. During this time, the Super Monkey Ball Twitter had been trying to gauge interest on what the next step for the series should be. They released a Twitter poll asking what fans would like to see. Just a side note, they put Adventure on here, which is pretty funny. I kind of wish someone made a bot that upvoted this a million times, because could you imagine an Adventure remake? The Twitter poll was ultimately pretty split in the end, with about half of fans wanting to see a new game, but the other half wanted a remake of Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2. I personally voted for Monkey Ball 1 and 2 remakes. At the time of this poll, I really didn't trust Sega to make a new Monkey Ball game, considering with the exception of Banana Split, a game no one played because it was on the PlayStation Vita, there hadn't been a good Monkey Ball game since, since, well, Deluxe? 2005? George frickin' W. Bush was the president? I thought remakes of 1 and 2 would be the only way we could get back to the golden era of the franchise, and I wanted the game developers to revisit this themselves before trying to push the series further. And finally, they listened. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania was released on October 1st, 2021 digitally, and October 5th, 2021 physically. This game is a remake of Super Monkey Ball 1, Super Monkey Ball 2, and Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. I guess ultimately this is just a remake of Deluxe, but whatever. The development of this game is kind of foggy to the general fan base. The narrator of Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 told YouTuber Nick Robinson there was a new game coming along the way that would be similar to the old games, codenamed Monkey Ball Retro. Well, the narrator didn't end up being involved in Banana Mania at all, so it could have just been a shot in the dark, but a new Monkey Ball game did end up happening anyways, so uh... It might have been a coincidence, maybe he was involved at some point, who knows? Either way, development was said to start in March of 2020, and the developers worked on this project remotely as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Before we get into things, I do want to be transparent and say that Sega did send me an early access code of the game, which I want to say thank you so much. I seriously didn't expect this as a small content creator, but was told by the community manager because of my content they would be more than happy to send me one. As someone who puts countless hours, passion, and soul into every one of my videos, this made me so happy. So I want to say thank you, Sega, from the bottom of my heart for this gift. It really did make me happy. I also want to say that if you haven't seen my prior reviews of the series, it's a good idea to check those out before we get into it, since they provide a good foundation and understanding of what Monkey Ball 1 and Monkey Ball 2 seriously were as games before we go in depth into a review of a remake. Sega is remaking some beloved games here. It's really risky to make a game like this because you run the risk of just upsetting millions of fans who held these games near and dear to their hearts. They are on a tightrope holding a puppy over a fountain of sharks with this game. Did they survive the walk? The best thing that I think Banana Blitz HD did was take the Wii game that had a pretty bad presentation and gave it a very nice, fresh coat of paint. Menus and UI had a clean, sharp, yellow and black modern approach, along with a new theme song that had vocals to tie everything together. This worked well, and as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh god, please don't fix it. That's how we get games like Amiibo Festival. So yeah, Banana Mania has the same yellow and black aesthetic and modern feel which reinvented the series back in 2019, and it works great yet again. There's some nice touches here too. When you pause, for instance, you see your character you're currently using on the left side of the screen. If you enter a special code on the menu as well, you can get an extended version of the theme song. How cool is that? 
One of the big things that got promoted about Banana Mania is that it has a nutty character roster. It's kind of interesting to think that Monkey Ball 1 had 4 characters, but Banana Mania has over 20 playable characters if you include character skins. Of course, there are the 4 monkeys from the classic games, but Yan Yan and Doctor from Banana Blitz also return, and all 6 of them received classic costumes for a pack for $5. I think this DLC pack was a great idea, personally, and a really good deal. $5 for 6 costumes is a steal in my book, and I am so glad that they included the classic characters as someone who has always preferred the original designs for many reasons. Giving Yanny and the Doctor classic costumes was also a good idea. They didn't have to do this, and they did a really good job. They looked like characters who would have fit right in with the classic games. I am so appreciative that Sega did this. While classic character skins might be a small thing for some people, this is something that instantly makes this game so much better to me. I feel as a Sega fan heard because the new designs range from bad to okay, but weren't even close to the original feel and aesthetics that made the series as good as it was. On top of the six monkeys from Banana Blitz, there's Jam, who is from Monkey Ball Step and Roll, and also Jet from Monkey Ball 3D. Their character models kind of look jagged and didn't get updated that much, and personally I have zero attachment to these characters, but it's great fan service that they added them for the fans that did. The classic skins aren't the only DLC in the game. There's also a $5 costume pack which gives you three classic console skins. This is really cute, honestly, and a great throwback to Sega's history. You can play as the Dreamcast, the Sega Saturn, and the Sega Game Gear. Have you ever played as the Game Gear? No, 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 I don't mean played on the Game Gear. I mean, have you ever played as the Game Gear, a character itself, in a video game? This game is so awesome. On top of these, Sega also added some characters from their other franchises to play here. Sonic Returns from Banana Blitz HD, and I'm pretty sure it's the same model from that game, which was the same model from Sonic Generations, and uh, yeah, also Tails is here. So now you can see your miles per hour playing as miles per hour. Uh, well, I guess this is kilometers, so my joke is dead. Thanks, Sega. I kind of don't like playing as Sonic because it reminds me too much of Banana Blitz HD, but maybe that's selfish of me, and that's kind of a nitpick, honestly. You can also play as Jet from Generations, Set Radio and the main character from Yakuza, except Professor Oak took his shrink ray out and made him minuscule. It's kind of weird to see him as a monkey ball character because of this, but eh, it, it works. The other Sega characters also have the benefit of having the in-game collectible, normally bananas, turn something custom to their franchise, like rings for Sonic. However, one disappointing thing about these characters is that they have no voice clips when they cross a goal or enter a stage, so they almost feel a bit lifeless and like mods. But her her guys, this is the best 3D Sonic game we've had in a decade, isn't this joke still funny? Uh, okay, that joke might be getting old, but it's, it's, still, not, it's still not wrong, so uh... Yeah, that's awkward. On top of the $5 packs for classic characters and classic consoles, there are also three additional characters you can purchase, each for $5 a piece, being Hello Kitty, Morgana from Persona, and a Suezo from Monster Rancher. What game is this? I've never heard of this. While I'm more than happy to pay $5 packs for multiple characters or skins, I think $5 for a single character is unnecessarily pricey and something I find to be fairly upsetting for the series. To compare games a bit, a character for Super Smash Bros. is $6, US but think about all the things you get with that character. You get a new stage, you get new songs, you get to play with an entirely different moveset with unique attributes, there are the taunts, there are extra spirits that are put into the game, there's a new classic mode level, and the list goes on, but think for a second what you really get for $5 and Banana Mania. Besides the skin of a character, you get nothing. No new levels, no new songs, no anything. It's just a simple model. I find this to be disappointing since these DLC characters feel extremely greedy as a result. If you could purchase three characters for $5, I think that feels a bit better, or if these characters were priced for $1 each. On the other hand, since these characters don't add anything to the actual game, you don't miss out on much by not buying them. It's not all doom and gloom though, but yeah, I think it's pretty unfortunate that this DLC type of practice has infected even the most innocent of games like Super Monkey Ball. There's also a $5 DLC pack, which gives you the original version of the songs from the classic Monkey Ball games, just in case you didn't want to listen to the new soundtrack, which we'll get to in a bit. All this talk of DLC does sound pretty overwhelming, 
but it's not the end of the world. Let's sit back and really analyze this for a second. The base price for this game is 40 bucks. If you add $5 for the classic characters and $5 for the classic music, this game is a smooth $50, a really good deal. I mean, most new games come out for 60 bucks or even 70 on newer consoles. And honestly, if this game came out at 60, I wouldn't have blinked an eye. It genuinely has a great amount of content and production. So really, we can sit here and yell at Sega all day, but what are we complaining about? I think most of the DLC is fair. And if you don't want any of it, you have the option to spend only 40 bucks. And with these additional garnishes, it's 50 bucks, still 10 or $20 less than many new games. It's only when you start paying $5 for a single skin that's where I have issues with the price, but again, considering these characters don't add anything, not buying them, it's your choice, and the game remains the same overall, so I can live with this. Even better regarding the price, the physical version of the game comes with an art book manual, which is a really interesting read and a good deal to boot. There are detailed evolution trees of each character. It's a charming read, and as a whole, I want to take a moment and appreciate Sega, because they unified the series. From the day Monkey Ball Banana Mania was revealed, they took a moment to acknowledge that there were indeed Super Monkey Ball games that gave the series its legacy and the success it had. It almost felt like Banana Blitz and Onwards, in a sense, decided to just reboot the series and say screw the past. It got rid of all the original character designs, it changed the gameplay around, it was almost like an entirely different series. Banana Mania, on the other hand, celebrates what Super Monkey Ball was and hopefully will be in the future. The trailer had games like Monkey Ball 1, Monkey Ball 2, and even had games like adventure. It had games like touch and roll. Okay, they didn't show the Engage version, which was a huge deal, but still, in a sense, it's like visiting an old home you haven't been to in years. Coupled with that, the release of Banana Mania corresponded with a complete overhaul of how they communicated and interacted with the fans of the Super Monkey Ball community. This was something that did start with BBHD and again was improved upon during the build-up to this game. There were videos genuinely promoting this game. There were retrospectives of individual games. There were cute videos with Ai teaching you how to cook, sneak peeks, character reveals, and in general a close-knit and wholesome community. I, I debated cutting this section out of my review, since you know this doesn't have that much to do with the actual game itself, but you clicked on a Jeff Compass video, you know I'm gonna ramble, and in general, all this contributed to the feel and general vibe, excitement, and experience of the game, so I think it's really important, personally. Super Monkey Ball as a series feels appreciated and cared about again, and it's really funny almost when you look at Sonic, a series that sells way more and even had an anniversary this year, but was totally shrugged to the side and given almost no appreciation in comparison. One of the most important parts of an HD remake is how it looks and how it sounds. It's crazy to think that Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 were nearly 20 years ago because these games look so beautiful to this very day. I always maintained that Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 were some of the best looking games of their time, and I still maintain that you can almost get away with those graphics in this day and age. So Banana Mania was kind of in a weird spot. How do you push forward the graphics from these games when they already looked so damn solid? And overall, they actually did a pretty good job. The character models, besides a few, are clean and look great with the new lighting. The backgrounds are dazzling, and the colors that paint these worlds are ever so vibrant. SME2, for instance, looked amazing, but definitely always looked a bit undersaturated. However, I think mainly the SMB1 games benefit more from the overall all, since that game released earlier than 2 and also had no progressive scan, but the SMB2 backgrounds are still a sight of beauty. Some backgrounds are less detailed than the older games. The volcano environment, for instance, kind of looks more like it did in Banana Blitz and less like it did in 2. The inside of the whale environment, as well, feels a bit less detailed. SMB1's master stages feel like the biggest downgrade to me. It wasn't that detailed to begin with, but the current background really reminds me of Banana Blitz HD more than the original. I think the background that are simplified are an attempt to keep somewhat of the style from Banana Blitz and onwards, when Monkey Ball stepped away from the good graphics and detailed environments. Not all the backgrounds are dumbed down though. Jungle Island, for instance, from both 1 and 2 are insanely detailed, and worlds like Clock Tower have never looked better, the latter being replicated almost for one for one. As for the music, they took a pretty ambitious approach to this soundtrack. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda just expected them to remix everything, but instead they remixed maybe half of the songs and for the other half, gave them entirely new music. As a monkey boomer, you'd think I'd be opposed to this style, 
but I'm actually not. The new songs are quite good. There's a few I'm not big on, but more often than not, it's less because I think a song is bad and more often because I think it maybe doesn't fit so well. Clock Tower in particular is a great example of that. Go! If this played in the carnival world, for instance, I think it'd work, but this song in particular does not capture the original stage's feel at all. Some of these new songs are really good, though. Ready? Go! I think it says something that while I love the classic songs and have literally the option to listen to them with the DLC, I more often than not choose to listen to the new soundtrack. And when I do want the old songs, they're there. I can listen to them at any point. Since the soundtrack does have a few songs that are eh, I wish they did give you the option to make a playlist of sorts without having to change the music and the options so frequently. Uh, but this is less of an actual complaint and more of a constructive idea for maybe future entries. And as alluded to earlier, Banana Mania comes with a theme song. And this is one of the most catchy theme songs I've heard in a video game and continues the trend recently where games have theme songs as with vocals. Continuing with the audio, not only are the songs themselves redone, but just about everything else is as well, barring a few sound effects from the mini games. Each monkey has, to my knowledge, new voice clips, and I think they're more charming than ever. Each monkey's given a pristine personality and are always entertaining to listen to, even if you hear the voice clips quite repeatedly. Their narrator from the classic Monkey Ball games is replaced as well, and I think the new voice actors sound really good. They make the old narrator sound kind of like an amateur and are refreshing to listen to. The mini game narrator sounds really really nasally, but y you know what? It's fresh and nice to hear updated regardless. The rolling sound effect though is a bit weird. It doesn't ever correlate when you're actually rolling in comparison to the old games and feels more synthetic. There are a ton of game modes in Banana Mania. Bear with me, we're gonna be talking about these for a little bit of this video. Firstly, Story Mode from Super Monkey Ball 2 makes a return. Notice how I said from Super Monkey Ball 2 and not Super Monkey Ball Deluxe because the 100 stages in Story Mode are the exact 100 from Super Monkey Ball 2. Deluxe's Story Mode had you play 100 as well, but for each world you got to pick 10 out of the 20 levels. I'm a little curious why they didn't just repeat this system. I personally think SMB2 story mode and SMB Deluxe's by extension was really short. Since there are 300 levels to choose from, I personally think it would have been nice for the flow of story mode if you had to play 150 or so, even if they kept the 100 stages concept and just filtered out some SMB2 stages in favor for some of the Monkey Ball 1 and Deluxe stages, it would have been a nice breath of fresh air instead of a straight up story mode port from 2. Story mode in Banana Mania is a completely different beast than Monkey Ball 2's in structure as well. For one, you don't get to pick stages in any order you want anymore. You play them all in a linear order. While this isn't a big deal for me personally, since I feel I'm okay at this game to get through any level Banana Mania presents, thinking from a casual lens, I struggle to see this as anything but a downgrade. I personally loved the choice as a kid to take a break from a frustrating level, clear my mind a bit, and make progress towards something else. As such, the freedom story mode used to provide is pretty dead. What also takes a backseat in story mode is, well, the story itself. Instead of the cutscenes from Super Monkey Ball 2 and Deluxe that showed Ai Ai and the gang's adventure to take down the villain, Dr. Bad Boon, what you get here is an extremely stripped down version of that. There are some comic book type panels that barely represent what the actual story was supposed to be, as the monkeys sit around and watch on TV and then they dance and uh, I, I don't know, it, it's an afterthought, surely, but I, I genuinely don't mind these current cutscenes if I'm being honest. I didn't expect expect them to straight up transfer the cutscenes from Monkey Ball 2. They wouldn't fit in for one with the current graphics, and I think the idea of overhauling the entire thing with new CGI cutscenes just would have been too costly. Not to mention, they'd have to rewrite the plot a bit to include Yan Yan and Doctor, and I think it would have just been more trouble than it would be worth. Let's take a step back here, let's remove the nostalgia goggles. Yeah, some E2 story was cheesy, it was charming though, but it... <laughs> It doesn't need to be in the game. It wasn't some cinematic masterpiece or anything. 
you, Jeff. Don't get me wrong, the new story is a downgrade, but I can survive with this. But it does beg the question, why does story mode even exist? On second go-arounds of story mode, you don't even get to see the cutscenes again. Again, quite different from Monkey Ball 2, which treated it like its own separate game, letting you enter a name with a file and all the garnishes on top. The benefit to this, at least, is you can at least replay stages without too much difficulty. But my point is that this really didn't need to exist in the form they presented it in. Quick detour here, but it's to build up for a point, I swear. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania removed the life system seen from the classic games. Ugh, this is a very mixed bag to me. On one hand, yes, lives are and have been nearly irrelevant in video games for years now. Super Mario Odyssey didn't have them, for instance, and I do get that in a modern video game, lives are considered to be a hindrance to a standard new player. But let's take a step back, though, and remember just how Super Monkey Ball 2 was structured. There was the challenge mode, which kept lives and continues, which encourage the player to play safely and carefully. You want to pick up bananas and by extension just try to get good at the game. But if you didn't want to worry about lives, there was always the story mode where you could be as risky and as crazy as you wanted to. Go nuts or go bananas, haha. There's really no punishment for failure here. Now, there's no punishment for failure anyways, so why does there need to be a story mode? Considering there are only 10 exclusive stages to story mode, I think story mode could have just been cut if they wanted to add these to expert or something. By the same token, it's not an offensive inclusion, since at the end of the day, it's just a different way to play this game, and this game is fun, but the line between what constitutes story mode and challenge mode now is very blurry. What is an improvement to the story mode is now you can use any character, even ones that aren't in the story. This is a great quality of life improvement, it always felt so arbitrary before to have to play as Ai Ai. So, canonically, Hello Kitty has defeated Dr. Bad Boon. The pandemic is making us all go insane. The rest of the stages from 1 and 2 are split up how you'd expect, more or less similar to the old days. Monkey Ball 1 and 2 both have separate casual, normal, and expert modes, which are parallel to beginner, advanced, and expert. Why did they change the names? I don't know. But it's fine. Complaining about that would ultimately just be a nitpick. There's also a marathon mode for Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 separately, which is actually pretty awesome, and an improvement over the originals in a sense, since being able to play all of them in one giant playthrough is really satisfying. The deluxe stages are in the game, but they are listed in a special mode instead of something within the same menus as Monkey Ball 1 and 2. Someone at Sega really hated Monkey Ball Deluxe. It's not a big deal, but it's really weird that decided to shove the deluxe stages into a corner like that when this was advertised as a deluxe remake. To make matters worse, the ultimate mode from deluxe, which let you play every stage in a row, is unfortunately gone here. I personally love the idea of playing 300 stages in one giant marathon, but I am a degen after all. I'll still do it. I just have to choose them separately now. And also by doing that, the flow of every beginner advanced and so on gets disrupted. Since there are no lives or continues anymore, the extra stages that were earned from the old games by beating the mode without using the continue are now earned by not skipping any stages from the menu. <sighs> and yeah, that's an actual feature now. Let's 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 talk about this. Monkey Ball 1 and 2, they were really difficult games. Banana Mania is interesting in the sense that some aspects have been made really easy. They really went to town with options for such. For one, there's the already mentioned menu option that lets you skip any level you want. Nice. This is literally the beat a game shtick from the Angry Video Game Nerd Show. You just push the button and the game's beat. And you can unlock a jump button now with your bananas to play these stages with the jump button from Banana Blitz. The jump button is kind of fun if you just want to break the game, but I I'm personally not a fan of any of it or really any of the modes that make this easier. I think it's mainly a preference thing. I totally understand that newer players will probably have a better time if they are able to skip ahead of stages that are difficult, and I do understand at the core of this game they just want it to be accessible, but I do wish it was less in your face. For instance, after five deaths, the game asks you if you want to just skip the stage. Five single deaths, you're gonna die five times on some stages, so this bothers me for two reasons. One, as far as I know, you can't turn this off, so it becomes kind of annoying after a while. 
The other point of interest is, and I feel like this is rather a gray area and discussion-based topic rather than an objective complaint, is that people are going to end up playing this game in a completely different way than the originals. Again, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, depending on how you look at it, but it does kind of suck for there to be a remake of these games, only for the entire approach one would attack them in to be completely different. Another issue I find with this is that there's remnants of the life system still in the game that go unaffected. For instance, all the bonus stages from Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe return, but why is there literally any incentive to play them? And from there, why bother get any bananas in the main mode? There's a store in game, which we'll talk about later, but after only a few playthroughs, you already have enough for pretty much everything, meaning that the bananas really have no long-term longevity on anything within the game. I'm not trying to be mean to this game because I do love Banana Mania and this game does so much right, but to me, this specific aspect is a huge downfall. It's not that the game is easy per se, it's just less gratifying to get good at. On the other hand, if this seriously does make people happy and encourages people to play the game more, then fine, it's a change I can live with. But I have seen other reviewers and newer players say that it hurt their enjoyment and replayability aspect regarding this game. A change that I can't live with though is that the multiplayer from the main mode is gone. The multiplayer in Super Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe was superb and something that contributed to its everlasting legacy as a Nintendo GameCube title. It was perfect for parties or just hanging out with friends or even playing with your family. Each player gets their own experience and run of the game during this, and you take turns, each level or death. It's the perfect way to merge casual players and experienced players together. If you're a casual, you can take a sip of your beer or just send a text. If you're more serious, you can teach your friends how to improve. And in general, this was such a fun competition. I remember me and one of my friends spent maybe close to 100 hours doing the local multiplayer in 1, 2, and Deluxe. In Banana Mania, they just said, screw all of that, local co-op is dead, and it didn't need to be like that. It was allegedly planned at one point. On the website, there was literally a reference to beating Jungle Island in local co-op. So what happened here? I have a few theories. One, this was planned originally and was scrapped to meet deadlines. Two, whoever wrote that on the website severely messed up and probably got fired from Sega for misspreading information. Three, this will be added eventually as an update or DLC. And four, my personal favorite, who the f knows. Whatever the case is, this is insanely disappointing. You can't even play with your friends online. The minigames do have multiplayer, but right now I'm speaking purely on the main mode. So Sega, if you're watching this video, this unhealthily and stupidly long review and managed to hear this one sentence, please patch this in. I don't think it's too late or would be too hard to implement. And I really do think this would make this game closer to the perfect monkey ball game. As is though, people who want to play this with their friends are just going to boot up the old games, and it's very confusing to me why they omitted this feature. There are still other forms of multiplayer, but they're more indirect. You can connect to the internet now and compete on online leaderboards. These are console specific as far as I'm aware, and what it does is it times only the in-game gameplay rather than any of the loads or time between deaths. This is a really nice way to encourage replayability, and a mode that will be built to last in regards to the longevity of this game. Game. There's even a mode where you can play against a ghost of another player, which is a really cool idea and quite innovative for this game's online meta. From here, you'd be able to learn strats, compare your movement to others, to see perhaps exactly where you're losing time to someone else. This is a great way to encourage improvement and competition. Each story mode world and challenge mode option has an option to do so, but the special modes we're going to take a look at in a bit don't. This is mildly disappointing, but nothing that ruins the mode. Along with the previously mentioned main modes, you can now buy with your bananas additional challenge modes. Let's go over these one by one. The first we're looking at is reverse stage mode. As the title suggests, it's just normal stages, but in reverse! Ooh! Not to start this off with a negative note, but I think this mode is a little bit of a waste. There's only 10 stages chosen here for one, and I think these modes in general suffer a bit from being really short. Almost in a sense, it feels like when the mode is just getting started, it ends. I think some of these stages are pretty interesting to play in reverse. Free throw in particular is something that gave me quite a laugh, since at first you might think you can just go up to the goal, but there's a tiny bump you just can't get over, and therefore you need to launch yourself up in the air only to get back down. A 
tiny bit above. Some stages, I argue, do feel like a missed opportunity and wasted slot. Clover is a perfect example of this. This is the exact same stage when you really think about it, since the stage is symmetrical, and there's multiple parts where this happens. I think what would have been inherently more interesting is if they decided to bring over some stages that would be more unique and challenging. Like, what if they brought over Exam C and you had to work your way backwards from that environment? What about something like Construction? They might have needed to make slight adjustment to these stages as a result to make them playable, but they would have felt more tailored to the mode ultimately. I feel like reverse mode never really challenges the player too much. Don't get me wrong, there's a few good stages in here, but I think the picks were just a bit uninteresting. And again, 10 stages is kind of a buzzkill. There's a dark banana mode, which I think is the best bonus challenge mode in the game. The challenge here is that there are bananas littered throughout these stages, and if you touch one, your monkey dies. What makes them dark bananas? Are they poisoned? I'm pretty sure the hitboxes are bigger here. Don't think that's getting past me, Sega. I noticed, or I'm just bad. The stages here are really well picked, and each one feels like a unique puzzle you need to solve. If you think this game is easy, then you're gonna feel like a damn clown finishing this mode, because dark banana mode is literally one of the most difficult things in the entire series. In a sense, I really enjoy these levels, because they feel more catered to the idea that you can try a million times rather than be based around lives, something the original stages still feel like they cling to a bit design-wise. Twin Basin is one of the hardest levels I've had the honor to play in a monkey ball game, and I love it. And the others are pretty fun as well. I love this mode. I, again, just wish there was more of it. This deserved to be more fleshed out than it was. Golden Banana mode is a little bit of a mixed bag. All this mode is is another 10 stages littered with bananas, and you have to get each of them in each level. There are lots of main stages here, mostly from Deluxe, since that's when the development team had a serious love for making these stupidly giant stages. I like that they found another use for these stages, because often in Deluxe, these would go unexplored for the most part, and pointless to reverse after you knew what to do, so in a sense, it breathes a lot of new life to these stages. There's also the very difficult challenge aspect returning again. Strata, for instance, really requires you to be good and precise at landing and your exact control after such. Mad Rings, though, is BS and feels challenging in a bad way, since there's not a good way to beat this consistently without getting lucky. I think this mode is okay. It's a bit monotonous, yeah, but it's still a fun little mode to breeze through. I personally like it, but I do understand if someone had the opinion that they don't. Something interesting to note about this mode is by playing it, you unlock a skin of Golden Eye Eye, which is a nice little reward. I kind of wish other modes had something like this. The next mode is really interesting. Throughout the main modes, they nerfed or changed a lot of the stages considered to be the hardest in the original games. As such, they ended up making an original stage mode as a result, which has 23 stages that are closer in design and concept to the stages from the earlier games. These aren't exact replicas, which is a bit confusing. Catwalk, for instance, which was a fairly easy stage in Deluxe, becomes a stage that a casual player might spend hours on. In Deluxe, there was like a little cup that set you on the track, something that isn't in the OG stage mode, despite it being, well, OG. Air hockey is a different cycle than Monkey Ball 2, meaning that you can't do the strats from that game. While this does put a breath of fresh air into the game for a more seasoned player, it feels a bit more like a harder version of the Banana Mania stages rather than anything that comes close to the originals. I, I hope that makes sense because it does sound kind of weird saying that out loud. Regardless though, I really like this mode exists and it's quite the challenge. Again, if you think this game is easy, you're gonna feel pretty dumb playing this mode, which will seriously test you. Some stages though, I have no idea what they changed. Chaos for Monkey Ball Deluxe is in this mode, but no one to my knowledge has found any difference. Maybe they just wanted to make you play the stage twice for some reason, or I guess three times. The only other main mode is a practice mode. You can only practice Monkey Ball 1, 2, and story mode levels. Levels from the special modes are not practicable, which is kind of lame, but you can still choose them individually upon beating them once. The practice modes are really effective. They have a great quality of life option of letting you instantly retry a stage by pressing the Y button instead of having a menu like in the older games, which is really convenient and makes practicing more efficient than it ever was. I am glad this was here since I always got annoyed that this wasn't an option to practice in Banana Blitz HD. Thankfully, replays are back in this version as well, so I'm really glad in general they were accounting for the old features of the classic games, even if replays are less exciting than they were back in 2001. While most stages are pretty intact to how they originally played, there's a handful of stages that are pretty much brand new. Any stage with an AV logo on it, which was Amusement Vision, has been completely removed. I kind of feel a bit saddened by this. Would it have been that that big of a deal to put them in the game still. I understand legalities and blah blah blah, but 
it's a dead company that was a subsidiary of Sega. It's something I'm just a little bit sad to see gone. In terms of how the game plays itself, I unfortunately think the controls and physics have worsened quite a bit. Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 stages seriously benefited from the GameCube controller. As I said in a prior review, the GameCube control was to Super Monkey Ball what the Wii mode is to Skyward Sword. There's a certain level of sensitivity, precision, and depth of control stick added that simply made this game on a completely higher level than anything else around its time. Surgeons used to play Super Monkey Ball 2 to warm up for their job! Okay, I'm sorry, but can you imagine being a freaking patient in a hospital waiting to get surgery? You lie down, and you're like, hey, I'm getting heart surgery, and your doctor looks at you straight in the eyes and says, hey, you're gonna be just fine. I played some Super Monkey Ball 2 earlier. Like, holy crap, I don't know if I would freak out. I would maybe say, hey, what's your favorite stage? Do you like sliced cheese? I hate sliced cheese. But you know what? The OG Super Monkey Balls were precise enough where I might feel safe. But if my surgeon said to me he played Banana Mania before it, I would just... So yeah, the controls just aren't as precise and aren't as rewarding. Moving with precise increments is unfortunately a thing of the past with Banana Mania. Having the balance on a tight path is ultimately your worst nightmare in this game. I think this is because the game's coding or whatever lacks the diagonal inputs, and while you can technically work around this on the Steam version, screw the Steam version, I'm playing this on console so I can't fix it. I'm sad. Not only does this make micro adjustments nearly impossible, it has you approach a few stages entirely differently. The first time around playing Banana Mania, I died many, many times on both Seesaw Bridges and Warp. These are pretty easy stages in the original. I think the trick is you need to hold a 90 degree angle to make these stages workable, which isn't unmanageable, but is certainly a learning curve. In fact, I think this is what makes Swing Bar Long in Dark Banana Mode so difficult. You can't just move forward and convert it to a diagonal rhythm. You need to buffer a horizontal input from an earlier position to make sure you don't slide off. There are some major improvements to the way you play Monkey Ball, however. The biggest one, and something I think was probably wanted from day one of this entire series, is that you can now turn the camera, something I think adds so much to this game. In the settings, you can also adjust this camera sensitivity, which is great and something I found myself doing depending on the level I was in, making it feel like a dynamic setting and option that you have in your arsenal. I doubt it was intended that way, but I'm treating it like one. There are so many options here. You can even use motion controls if you want to. Why would you want to? I don't know. But everyone, whether you're a Banana Blitz player or player from the old days, you're accounted for here. I would recommend you play this on a controller with notches though, if possible. While the GameCube controller might not technically provide a ton of benefit in terms of its sensitivity since the game wasn't designed for it, the comfort of having a consistent notch is still a big bonus, and controllers like the Joy-Cons just aren't tailored for this. There are always going to be people who speak doom and gloom and say the controls are a huge problem and ruin the game. And while I think the controls are indeed a problem, it's nothing to me that makes this game a bad experience. I think it's important to remember we played the classic games a million times, and we had to get used to those levels back in the day as well. You will get used to these controls with enough time and practice, and I feel like none of these levels are outright unbeatable. Some will monkey murder you though over and over again. The stages that launch you in the air specifically are pretty stupid. They made it so each launch in the air is randomized. Yeah, that's right, RNG and Super Monkey Ball. It's the same same kind of thing with launchers. Sometimes they get flung so high up in the air that you literally die because they decided to put a death plane in the air for some reason. A actually, I'm pretty sure I know the reason. They oddly enough didn't patch the dizzy system glitch from Monkey Ball 2, so now instead of being stuck in the sky for 60 seconds, you just die immediately. Well, I guess that's a way to solve that issue, or you could have just patched it out, I don't know. Well, when you're not getting flung so high up in the air that you die in launchers, sometimes you get like halfway up the pillar, or sometimes just get the worst angle possible and bounce off the side of it. These levels become way more frustrating than necessary as a result, and I think that's my biggest gripe with this game. Super Monkey Ball 2 was fairly consistent. If you hit something at a particular angle, you'd usually have an idea of how your monkey would react to it, but here, each bounce off of something is a moment of sheer fear and terror. No two bounces and inputs are the same, and this isn't a huge deal casually, but does feel like a leftover Banana Blitz HD's engine. In that game, sometimes you get really random bounces. 
and there'd be little cracks in the ground that look like textures but just propel you out of nowhere. This is less so in Banana Mania, but still happens once in a while, and boy are those frustrating deaths. I specifically dislike levels that turn. Edge Master from Super Monkey Ball 1's Master is really frustrating, because it's very difficult to adjust to what the stage pushes on you with this control scheme. Ultimately though, I think the engine is good enough. It gets the job done. Don't get me wrong, it's worse than 1 and 2's for sure, but it doesn't ruin the game. It's not like the original games were perfect either, let's not fool ourselves here. Throughout the game, there's definitely some quality of life improvements to the stages. The stage cylinders, for instance, which was broken in the original, is actually pretty playable now. Helix is still hard, but feels more fair to me. Charge, which was a really unique concept in the original but was so hard to execute, is really solid now and works as I imagine it was intended to. Arthropod, Super Monkey Ball 2's advanced final stage, not only closes the gaps between the platforms, but also, thankfully, fixes the cycle a bit, so you don't have to wait a million years, at, at, least in, at least in story mode. In Expert, for some reason, it's still broken and requires you to wait, I think, longer this time. Why? Because screw you, that's why. Boiling Pot is the same sort of thing. In story mode, you can just hold up to make it in, but in Expert, you need to time it differently or you die right away for some reason, and you also have 30 extra seconds for some reason. The stages that repeat and story mode and expert are more often than not on different cycles and even amounts of times and i couldn't tell you why it really messes with your muscle memory a bit but it's not a huge problem or anything just really odd to me thankfully the minimap returns after a long hiatus from the series it's kind of a mixed bag here i think it's harder to gauge where you are a decent bit of the time but i think it remains serviceable enough if you go too high in the air though the game sometimes loses where you are and everything disappears in the shuffle of minimap adjustments with the x button you can just turn it off which i do appreciate since sometimes it is useful Bananas are also now missing on the minimap. I'd argue this is only a problem in golden banana mode since bananas are kind of useless in this game. Let's talk about the bananas a bit on that subject. There are multiple ways to earn them. Not only can you obtain bananas just by playing the game and getting them, there's also a new mission system, which I think is one of the best additions to this entire game. These are individual objectives that earn you extra banana points. While bananas themselves become useless after a bit, I do love the fact that there is an in-game achievement system. You don't get anything for doing all of them as far as I know. This still adds a lot of replayability to the game, and it's something completionists will rejoice over. The missions remain simple for the most part, finish a stage with a certain amount of time, or collect a certain amount of bananas and get to the goal. There are only missions for story mode stages specifically, which could be seen as a negative, but I think that will take up so much of your time that it ends up not being that much of a downside. For the other modes, the missions are a matter of finishing them without losing a certain amount of lives or concepts of that nature, which is still quite the challenge and very fun in my opinion. As previously mentioned, you are able to spend bananas in an in-game store. Here's where you can buy the game's special modes and also costumes to customize your characters with. You can pretty much unlock everything in the game store in under five hours of gameplay or so like I did, which makes collecting bananas ultimately pretty useless after a while. I really do like the idea though of customizing your characters. I actually suggested this change back in my Banana Blitz first impressions video, so whether or not that actually impacted anything, I'm glad to be heard a bit. The customization is very in-depth, and there's a really great amount of costumes and changes here. You can tell they had fun with this concept. They added COVID masks for the monkeys, which, which gave me a huge smile. I mean, they're already in balls, right? I kind of want one of these in real life. Not only are there clothing options, but options for you to change your ball color or pattern. I love this idea, but I kind of think it's hard to see through sometimes. It's like someone spilled soda on your windshield. One downside though, is that you can only apply these costumes to the main six characters, not to any of their costumes, classic included, or crossover characters. I think it's a fair compromise overall, as I imagine it would be hard to account for all of these, but I thought it was pretty important to note. One big positive though is your customizations do transfer to the minigames, which I think is enough of a benefit to balance out the fact that it runs with only the six main characters. It is kind of disappointing that you can't use anyone else besides the main six in a minigames, especially again when you consider some of these characters cost money. Also in the store, you can purchase reactions for the game's camera mode, which, uh, yep, there's a camera mode. I don't have a lot to say about it, but it's a nice addition that it's here and it can be pretty funny. I appreciate that the developers had some real fun making this game. This definitely wasn't needed, but I am still happy it exists. You can add some filters to your gameplay as well, which, okay, these aren't useful in any way, but again, something I can at least appreciate and thank them for adding. One major negative
negative of this game is that at least on my Nintendo Switch, it unfortunately has some major performance issues. The frame rate is mostly fine, but once in a while the game will stutter and I can live with that, but three separate times while playing Banana Mania so far, my game just outright crashed on a loading screen. I was originally not going to put this in my review because it just happened once or twice, but the fact that this kept happening made me feel like I needed to point it out. I wouldn't be surprised if this was just a Switch exclusive issue, and that's all I can confirm it happened on anyway. As for the mini games, I'm going to separate them into three categories this time around, mainly because I'm sick of talking about them in the same order. We're, we're going to switch things up, all right? Considering this is a remake and all, we're going to separate them into better than the old games, worse than the old games, and about the same as them. We'll start with the negatives so we can end on a happier note. I'm not going to go seriously in depth with the mini games. They're pretty simple, and I've already talked about these a lot in my prior videos, so I would recommend watching those again if you haven't. I'm going to be instead focusing more on what was changed, what should have been changed, and stuff of that nature. Starting off with the worst than the old games, and as much as it pains me to do this, we have the beloved monkey Target. I have no idea what went wrong with the development of this, but it's pretty much just ruined. Like, it, it's impossible. I couldn't even play this for that long because I got too frustrated and gave up. Getting to a Target is undoable now. It, it could technically be done. I've seen people do it, but I couldn't do it. So, good luck. Guess I am never getting all the achievements in this game, which makes me kind of sad. You sink so quickly, and any momentum you build off of the ramp gets eaten and turned into a scripted event rather than any sort of logical continuation of the momentum that you have, like the old games did. Sorry for the lack of a review on this one, but I, I literally couldn't play it. I mean, this immediately needs an update or a patch or something, because in the current state it's in, it's unplayable. What a shame. Thankfully, there's only one other minigame in this list that I think was worse than the originals, and that's Monkey Baseball. This is, like, kind of unplayable as well, but not on the level of Monkey Target. It's still BS, though. The physics just don't make any sense, and there's no control over where your ball will go after you hit one. Even when you get a good hit, the ball doesn't go up on the ramp all the way for a home run. The CPUs are horrible. They don't even try to hit the ball half the time, and when the CPU is pitching, sometimes they just hit you and then dance on your grave. Okay, I'm sorry, but this isn't allowed in baseball to just assault the hitter. Am I missing something? Screw Monkey Baseball. They freaking ruined it. Most of the minigames are about the same, thankfully. I kind of go through a reviewer crisis every time I review Monkey Ball minigames. Since I don't have a lot to say, am I just being lazy? I never would want that to be the case, but I seriously draw blanks half the time and what to say so it comes off that way in my head. All I could write down for Monkey Tennis when I was taking notes, for instance, was, I don't know, it's tennis, and that's how I feel. No noticeable changes on this one. The same goes for Monkey Bowling. I'm unable to find any noteworthy changes between this and the original. I kind of appreciate almost how well they were able to replicate this one, and the brilliant special mode returns here, thankfully. This was, of course, one of the series' best moments in terms of its minigames. Monkey Golf has no noticeable changes as well, but the physics do feel pretty off sometimes. My good reviewer friend Johnny said there's no cutoff for the par in the multiplayer, and that they had to shoot over 60 shots to move on. Okay, that's a pretty big downgrade. Maybe it shouldn't be here. Monkey Fight almost made my worse than the originals list. There's no dynamic camera this time. It's a straight down, top down view, and the items you get sometimes completely block your vision, leaving you vulnerable to getting killed. This game also just feels a bit more slippery. The controls feel a bit more delayed and just less responsive. Overall, though, I think Monkey Fight is playable and not that different from the originals, but I could respect if someone were to say they thought this was outright worse than the original. I never had that much of an attachment to it, but yeah, it's a slight downgrade. It gets the point across, though. It's still a fun party game. Monkey Soccer is about the same as well, but I honestly find that a bit disappointing because the original wasn't all that great. I never feel like I have too strong of control of my character here, but I was still able to score a few goals, something I don't think I could do in the original. The goalies do feel a little useless here, though, but overall, it's a decent little soccer minigame. I just wish they kind of improved it a bit more. Monkey Shot falls into this category, but almost made my naughty list. The narrator just speaks way too much here. I get it, dude. I hit an enemy. Thankfully, you can turn this off, and from there, it's essentially the same as Super Monkey Ball 2's Monkey Shot. A nice change is that you can actually turn on auto-reload for your shots with an option, and now you can also choose the harder levels without having to beat the prior ones, so for bad players like me, I can actually see the other levels. Billiards is about the same as well, in terms of quality at least, but in terms of functionality, there are differences. Unfortunately, the monkeys drinking milk in the background were removed, so the background is a bit generic now. The turning while trying to line up a shot takes forever. 
longer, but thankfully you can speed this up by holding the L button, so it doesn't really ruin anything. The CPUs feel really good as well. Sometimes they get the dumbest of shots in and are able to chain together a million of them, but I don't find this ruining the game too much since it's not that hard. I think I would just prefer playing the original here though, even if it meant going out of my way to hook up my Wii again, so I think in a way this minigame fails by being a product of inferiority, uh, but it's really not that bad. I'm happy to report there are a good number of minigames that are genuinely better. This has what I think is the best monkey racing in the entire series. The controls just feel so right here. You still can't control the monkey in the air, which can be pretty frustrating, but in general, doing turns and more precise movement is a lot easier. It feels less chaotic and more strategic as a byproduct of such, and there were even moments I was able to use the better control of my character to my advantage. Yeah! Monkey racing does feel easier though. I realized after the first Grand Prix, I had an assist mode on, but even after turning that off, I was still getting first place every round, and I didn't notice any different. I'm sad to see even the mini games in this game getting nerfed a bit in terms of difficulty. I know game companies don't mean harm by making these things easier, but it becomes a little disappointing to veterans like me. All in all though, this is a great improvement and the best monkey racing in the entire series in my opinion. It even looks a lot better than the originals. The vibrancy of the graphics really shows here and I think this is where they spent most of their time on the mini games in terms of development, honestly. Monkey Boat is finally a good game here as well. For those who don't remember SMB2, Monkey Boat was like nearly unplayable. I'm still bad at Monkey Boat, but I do think if I sat down and tried, I could seriously get good at this game now. I still do wish there was a way to control the camera here, and also when you're in the air, you can't do much to control your character, and the physics are kind of off at point, but this is a genuinely well done remake of the game. It actually makes me want to play it a little bit more. Monkey Dogfight, I think, is better as well. This has never been my type of game, but it feels so much less sluggish. I could see this being a more popular and memorable game in the lineup of mini games as a result of such. I'm very mixed on these mini games overall. They made some better and some worse, so what you get is a lineup that really isn't that much grander than the original game's lineup overall. I don't really feel like we've made much progress in this regard because of that. I really appreciate the fact, at least, that the remake does bring back every nook and cranny of the original minigames. Every side mode, every option, as far as I could tell at least, seems to be recreated and accounted for here, which I really do appreciate. The minigames, of course, look better overall, although some have been banana blitz, yeah, I'm coining that term now, such as billiards, and the music is pretty solid as well. I think because it's fairly neutral, it's about the same experience you'd be having on the originals. I think you want to stick to the originals anyway at a party. Having Monkey Target be bad now is really a problem for the lineup. I remember as a kid, that's the mini game like everyone wanted to play. And having Boat be a better game now really doesn't do much to fill that gap. I'm sorry, Monkey Boat, you're doing your best, I know, but it's not enough. I do feel like the minigames were kind of an afterthought for the developers, but regardless, these are serviceable. To tie everything together, there's a gallery in this game, which combines many of the elements of Super Monkey Ball 2's option menu. You can rewatch story mode cutscenes if you wanted to, and your replays here, and also have the option to listen to the music in case you're stranded on an island and can't search for them on YouTube. It's, t it it's a nice feature to have. I'm just making a joke, trying to meet my comedy quota for this video, leave me alone. You can also play the credits from the gallery, and what's very unfortunate is that there's no credits minigame in this game. While BBHD and a few others skipped out on this as well, it's still pretty disappointing considering the roots of this game and what they're trying to remake. It's very unfortunate in my opinion because I think they could have easily taken one from either Monkey Ball 1 or Monkey Ball 2. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is a great game. I did say a lot of negatives about this game today, but that's only out of constructive criticism and stuff I would hope they could fix in future games in this series. I wanted to briefly go over this game's positives again before we end the video because the game developers deserve to know why this game is so great. The classic costumes are back, the soundtrack kicks ass, the graphics are beautiful and vibrant, they fixed minigames like Monkey Racing and Monkey Boat and were faithful to most of the others. The gameplay is fun and exhilarating, and lots of small things from the originals were fixed to make this a better game. The character customization and hell, its roster is so good. The base price is really fair and something I can get behind for a modern game. There's a mission system and generally just strong content and a strong package. It's a job well done. There are problems, again, that would hope to be see fixed in future games, but these are by no means something that ruins the game or makes it an unenjoyable experience. This is nice to be like one of the best things Sega's done in years, since like Sonic Generations maybe? Things are finally looking up for this series. We've had some dark days in the Monkey Ball franchise since Deluxe, but this is the first game that I think truly brings it back to form. So I just want to say to Sega, 
one final time. You know, it's unfortunately sad to say that we'll never see a true Monkey Ball 3, which really makes me sad. All I wanted was one more game, you know, before my childhood ended. It's just safe to say the legacy of Super Monkey Ball is dead. Yeah. Monkey Ball really isn't doing too well as a series right now, guys. Right. Uh, Sega? So, yeah. Sega. I don't think they plan to do anything with the series. And if they do, it's not going to be in a good style. No. We're pretty much done with Monkey I don't even know if we can get a Kickstarter campaign going for, like, um, yeah. either a, four, like a three. Yeah. Like a classic three or, you know, a spiritual successor. There's not. The fan base really isn't yeah, that the huge Yeah, the Ball fan base either. isn't there for Monkey Ball, unfortunately. Um, Monkey Ball has been on a pretty bad decline the past few years to a point where it's not even really a series anymore. Hello, everyone. It is Jeff aka Gaming Compass here. Today we're going to be talking about Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. This game was just announced. Okay, gun to my head, this, you know, wasn't the first choice I had for a port of a Super Monkey Ball game. I'd like to clarify that I am still buying this game, even if Banana Blitz isn't really my choice for a Monkey Ball game to be ported. I still will buy it because I want to support the franchise and I want to see future iterations. Thank you.